The city of New York is the most populous city in the United States with an estimated population of 8,398,748 distributed over a land area of about 784 km square. New York is also the most densely populated city in the US. It is the largest metropolitan area in the world by urban landmarks. The world's most populous megacity, the cultural, financial and media capital of the world. New York is just... It's... It's... There are no words. Oh, thank God. It's a haven. But this iconic city with its mega iconic skyscrapers was once like this rocky, swampy, like this... Goo. From then on to today is a huge transformation. Yo, I am talking Kylie Jenner level of transformation. Or maybe more like the transformation her dad had. But like with anything famous and amazing in this world, people sometimes tend to forget what all went into making it happen. So today on Blessed Dark's 5 Minutes, we are discussing... undocumented immigrants immigration reform immigration reform if you are like me and follow the american election you will hear a lot about immigrants and migrants the reason for that is that us is a land of immigrants no really people came over took the natives out and just settled here and new york was no exception the city was founded by the dutch in 1636 and at the time the city was called new amsterdam constructed in what today is the tip of manhattan the Dutch built a fort, some trading posts and some small residences. And then the English took control in 1664 and renamed the city as New York, after the King Charles' brother, the Duke of York. Now let's jump 100 years into the future. At the time, the streets in New York were being made by residents themselves. However, they saw fit. A city council was soon appointed, but they were basically like my gym membership. Utterly useless. Various landowners cut out streets around their properties as they saw fit, which were later just approved by the council. Now the city council also owned a lot of land in the middle of the island and they wanted to divide the place into sellable plots to raise money for the council. Again, the idea was still not to make a uniform plan for New York City, but just their land. In 1797, the council commissioned Gork and Joseph Francois Mangin to survey Manhattan Street and come up with a plan. The final proposal made by them actually went well beyond what was asked. They did not just come up with a plan for the land, they came up with a plan for New York City. The council even accepted the plan as the new plan of the city for four full years. And then some BJP Congress, Trump, Clinton, EU, UK, Kangna and journalist type situation happened and the plan was scrapped. Now faced with a lot of problem because no official plan for the city was declared, the council had to act fast. The problem was any plan they could come up with, the city officials would be like, No, uh -uh, no way. Sorry, not gonna happen. Whoa. Whoa, prom night flashback. So in March of 1807, the state legislature responded by appointing a commission of three men to establish the new plan for Manhattan. They were given exclusive powers to do basically anything they wanted. They were the new bitches in town. On November 29th, 1810, the council came up with a plan. New York will be made into a rectilinear grid or a grid iron with straight streets and avenues intersecting each other at right angles. Let's look at the design. The New York had 12 north-south avenues and numerous cross streets arranged in regular right angle grid, tilted 29 degrees east of true north to roughly replicate the angle of the Manhattan Island. The combination of north-south avenues and the east-west streets at the specified dimensions was the creation of approximately 2,000 long narrow blocks. By removing a lot of the topographical features which once defined the plot boundaries, the grid turned land into a commodity, which could be bought and sold in equal size units, thus rationalizing the real estate market. Zoning requirements also contributed to the order brought on by the grid. The city required the buildings on avenues to have no more than two to three stories, and those on the streets to not have more than two, which obviously changed after a while. Since 1895, Five boroughs actually made up the city of New York, which are Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, the Bronx and Manhattan. But this video and this planning only applies to Manhattan part of the New York. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, 
there are rarely any open green spaces proposed. One of the major reasons of the lack of inland spaces in the plan was the belief that the public would always have access to the sea via the really large coastline. Their logic was that if New York was a city such as Paris or London, located along the relatively small Seine and Thames River, then more parkland for the benefit of fresh air and consequent preservation of health would have been necessary. Which, to be honest, seems fair. But the commission didn't foresee that commercial activity along the ports would cut off public from the beaches. And then, one of the biggest changes to this plan was made. The city realized that it needed some place to breathe. And so, land was bought back between the 59th and the 110th streets and the 5th and the 8th avenues to create what is now known as the Central Park. The concept for the park first came into discussion in the 1840s. By and far, its advocates were wealthy merchants and landowners who argued that New York lacked the kind of parks that graced cities such as London and Paris and that the creation of such a park would enhance New York's reputation as an international city. Because show-off is important, guys. Take that down, it's a life lesson. And hence, in 1876, the Central Park was unveiled to the public. Now, the great planning of Manhattan faced very heavy criticism, especially when it was being implemented. And especially if you take into account the fact that the natural topography of New York was completely unlooked. But just as there was widespread criticism, there was widespread praise. From Rem Koulas to Le Corbusier, architects have marveled at the site of New York, the cultural capital of the land of opportunities. And with that, it looks like our time is up. The planning of New York really defined a new era for urban design. And a lot of cities followed its lead. But all that in its own time. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, please share, please subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys next week with another video. Until then, you can follow me on Instagram for daily architecture facts. That is it. Bye-bye.